welcome Slags to MMA Bad Math. And before I get into this short series outlining how each UFC division plays out and who comes out on top by the end of 2023, firstly, I just want to give a somewhat thank you to the select few whom I've given out links for this channel to. Kindly take time to give a little feedback as it really will help in making future videos less shit. Additionally, if you know anyone that might be interested in this kind of MMA related content or might just want to be part of a tight knit community that simply loves the sport and would enjoy a forum to speak freely about it, bring them along. In addition to this series and several others already in the pipeline, I'll be providing detailed breakdowns of weekly fight cards, so look out for those. With that being said, let's get into this. So, for a division that had just lost its greatest ever champion, yes, the UFC literally gave away arguably its greatest ever champion for this delightful Muppet, and seemingly on the verge of being completely shut down and shit-canned only a few short years ago. Actually, for those of you who don't remember this, let's have a quick reminder of TJ Dillashaw's comments on the subject leading up to his fight with Cejudo back in 2019. I think they aptly sum up what the UFC thought of this division back then. I could care less, man. You know, if the UFC wants me to be an assassin, if they want to hire me to go down there and end it, I'll end it. And if I'm the champion, champion in both weight classes, bring it up anyways. Now, fortunately, UFC flyweight survived and is now arguably one of the deepest and most exciting divisions in the UFC. Certainly, if your forte is less about who talks the most shit and more about enjoying arguably the most high-level, well-balanced fires. For the purists in attendance, for sure. While we have failed to see a consistent champion over the last few years, with the title being passed back and forth like the old drippy drip in a back alley brothel, I do believe this is going to come to an end this year with a champion that will grab the crown early, hold on to it through to next year. So my prediction is that reigning champion Davidson Figueredo will struggle to make weight as he has in the past and despite the uncertainty surrounding Moreno, namely the Kraus gambling fiasco, corner ban, and mess with all of that stuff that could derail his fight camp, prick. I do believe Moreno will win by late stoppage in what's sure to be an all-out war, bringing an end to one of the most competitive rivalries in the history of the sport, and one that I personally will be really sorry to see the back of. This will force Davidson to make his post-fight weight cut and excuses, leading to a long-muted move back up to bantamweight, and Moreno will end the year with one defence against a surging contender. Now, speaking of surging contenders and outside shots, while I think we will only get two title fights in 2023, I expect to see a lot of movement in the division this year with the end of the rivalry that has defined it, providing the perfect opportunity for a new contender to force his way through, earning a shot at the newly crowned flyweight king. Now for me, the race is essentially between only five flyweight contenders. So for brevity, and my belief that the champion will only defend once at the end of the year, I'll be picking these contenders from inside the current top 15. There will be an upcoming video taking a closer look at some of the unranked prospects I think will make a splash this year. So again, have a look out for that. Now looking at our first contender, Brandon Royval is an exciting fighter prospect, if you can still call him that, coming off a really good two fight win streak. The first was a win over Matt Schnell in his last bout. Maybe not that impressive. That guy seems to get beaten up a lot. And Rogerio Bonterin, who I think is actually pretty good in what was a really razor-close split decision. 
having said that, I think Roy Val is still at least one fight away from an eliminator, as he has had really convincing losses against both Pantoja, who we'll talk about a bit later, and Moreno prior to these two somewhat impressive wins. So, given the state of the division as it stands, I think it will be a really tall order for him to get a shot at the belt before the year is out, regardless of a standout win this year or not. But I think maybe pairing him up with a few fighters I'm about to talk about now will at least potentially edge him closer and set up a few nice fights this year. Okay, the next contender I want to discuss is Mohamed Mukhaev. Now, while he's far more of an outside shot, he's really impressed early on. But essentially, this guy is fresh out of nappies. I really hope he has managed carefully here, as we already have seen the cautionary dangers of being pushed far too quickly, as we saw what happened with Sage Northcutt. Career, he's been in there with people that want to grapple with him. Cosmo! Poor bastard had his face destroyed in that one and hasn't fought since. And more recently with prospects like Zilal and Jordan and Darren Till serving as examples of what can happen if you bite off more than you can chew. Now, despite how wet Makayev is behind the fucking ears, I feel compelled to give him an honourable mention here. As with the British fight fans behind him, a spectacular win could see him jump the queue and find himself in contention if circumstances play out well. However, the unconvincing decision against Johnson, which some thought he really lost, I personally didn't, but I can see a case for it, and pulling a close fight out of the fire against Gordon, which if not for a last minute Hail Mary submission, was on his way to shit in the bed and probably losing a decision. These two are enough evidence for your boy that he's not quite there yet. However, at the tender age of only 22, he has all the time in the world to develop. I'd personally put him against lower ranked opponents outside of the top 15, but seeing as he is a top 15 guy now, he's most likely going to be paired with fighters in and around his ranking. So perhaps a fight against Ulan Bekov, who looked fairly unconvincing in his last fight but managed to pull out a similar Hail Mary win or perhaps Tim Elliott might be a really good test to see how legit he really is before getting a top 10 op opponent to close out the year with potentially greater things to come if his career is managed slowly and sensibly going into 2024. Makayev definitely one way or another is one way to keep is one uh, well, is one to keep an eye on. Now, the next contender I wish to talk about is Manel Cap, who looked really impressive in his last bout against Dvorak, who's a very decent prospect himself. But he has a few less losses against some of the higher ranked in the division, which, much as the case is with Roy Val, could prevent him from getting close to the top this year. He also had a really questionable fight cancellation against Bontorin, I think it was, after a brush with USADA. Now, this is alleged, but this really set alarm bells ringing. And his tendency to fuck about and waste time in the octagon, running the risk of losing a decision while looking for a knockout, really makes him a substantial gamble for me. However, you know, one flashy KO against a top 10 contender and his more than decent following he built as a monster in Ryzen might give him the nod later on in a year, and I'd pair him up with Roy Val or maybe Perez to see if he really is that guy to make a run. Now, this leaves Pantoja and Nicolau, who I believe the UFC will be really smart in pairing up as the next two in line, ideally in a five-round fight night main event, to set up who is next in line for the next shot. Now, while I think Pantoja is so underrated and underappreciated, he also holds two wins over Brandon, I love Lego's man, Moreno. Uh, timing has never really been on this side, 
he's long overdue a shot and now he is left with two options he can either wait for things to play out with a title fight and risk being passed over by a more active contender never a good option if you're not um bankable or seen as a star in the ufc and i'll get to why that's important in the next video or you can take the second option and ensure that he stays relevant by taking a title eliminator now i think he will take the latter option and fight nicolau and while i think this one will be really close despite two questionable ko's earlier in his career Nico has really looked like the fucking truth lately. He's in the midst of a really impressive six-fight winning streak against the likes of Dvorak, Cap, and Elliot. And I believe will edge out a fight of the night level victory in a really high level scrap that I believe will be an early contender for technical fight of the year. This will push him into a title shot against Moreno towards the end of the year, relegating Pantoja to what I consider Tony Ferguson status. In other words, the guy who deserved a shot, but ultimately never quite got there due to bad timing, luck, and just having contenders around him that surge at the right time. Now, obviously this is all conjecture and a lot has to fall in place, but regardless of how we get there and whom we get, get there against, I believe that Brandon Moreno is the best flyweight on earth and I'm taking a punt that he will edge Davidson with whatever contender emerges from an exciting pack failing to overcome him, ending the year as the undisputed UFC flyweight champion. Okay, so this brings us to the end of part one. Join me again for part two, where I will be having a comprehensive look at where I think Bantamweight will end up next year. Tune in for that as I have some really salty things to say about that particular division. In a bit, dildos. Mm -hmm.